welcome to Make the Most of Time at Home with Erin Lauder. Uh, today we'll be designing spaces and interiors, learning more about this with Erin. And a designer, tastemaker, and working mother of two, Erin Lauder is a modern day style icon. Committed to living life more beautifully, Erin founded the luxury lifestyle brand Erin in 2012. With a love for interiors and a talent for creating warm, inviting spaces, Erin's elegant, effortless aesthetic is a reflection of her unique upbringing. As she says, beauty is my heritage, but home and accessories are my passion. A graduate of the University of Pennsylvania's Annenberg School of Communications, Lauder began her career at Estee Lauder in 1992. She held various executive roles, including senior vice president and creative director throughout her time there. In addition to her work at Erin, Lauder currently maintains her role as Estate Lauder's Style and Image Director. Please give a warm welcome to Erin Lauder. Thank you so much, Michelle. Hi, Erin. It's a delight to have you here with us today to talk about design and beauty. It turns out this conversation is quite timely since it was recently announced that we'll be working from home till July of next year. Uh, how has working from home been for you? How are you feeling about this new normal? I mean, it's, it is the new normal and it's a total change. And in the beginning, of course, everyone was completely scared and it was an adjustment. But I have to say, it's really made you realize what's important. And, you know, it's family, health, close friends, mm -hmm. working and still being productive with your day. And it's just different. You know, I've got two teenage boys. So for me, it's been a wonderful um, experience having them home. And um, I mean, different because they went to boarding school. So they left home quite young. So it's been such a treat. Mm -hmm being with them every day and really enjoying that time together. But it is, a, it's a change. And I think now everyone's just getting used to it. You know, we're about to do something on our website about a desk edit and working from home and the way we're looking at business and products has also changed. Absolutely. Uh, 2021 seems quite some time away and I'm glad that you could have all this family time. I feel like a lot of us, especially those with um, families at this point, sometimes it's more time than they've ever had before. Um, <laughs> So it's kind of a precious time. I really don't know when in history we'll, we'll ever be able to see something like this again. So it definitely is you know, a m moment to remember. And so I wanna open up things on a fun note. When I think of your brand, Erin, the images and feelings that come to mind are kind of an escape to a balmy day by the Mediterranean seaside, you know, effortless beauty and enchanting gardens. When the world reopens again one day, where's the first place you wanna visit? Oh, that's a great question. Probably <laughs> Paris or London. Um, mm. you know, as you said, the brand is very much about storytelling. I launched the brand about seven years ago, this fall will be eight, and it was really based on the concept of heritage, storytelling, and dream. And a lot of our fragrances are inspired by beautiful destinations. And the one thing I am missing during this time is really travel. It's like being mm -hmm. you know, inspired and you're finding other ways of being inspired. I'm on Instagram constantly. My husband's forever telling me to turn off my phone in the middle of the night because what I love about Instagram is like if you're up in, you know, in America in the middle of the night, everyone else is posting everywhere else. So you can always mm -hmm. be inspired. So I think it just teaches you to kind of be inspired by different things in different ways. But definitely Paris and London are my two first choices to visit when I can. I'm definitely one of those people also late at night, you know, around midnight. I also look at your Instagrams that time for inspiration. I see your beautiful table settings and yeah. that's why we're so excited to have you here today. I would love to start from where it all began for you. Your grandmother is renowned beauty pioneer Estee Lauder. Um, outside of its brand, the Estee Lauder company also brought to life beauty counter favorites such as Origins and Clinique before acquiring cult favorites like La Mer and Bobby Brown. What was it like having Estee as a grandmother? Well, she was an incredible woman. And, you know, she was warm, she was elegant, she was creative, she was loving. Um, there are many things about Estee that people don't know. I mean, as a grandmother, she was so full of love. Like she would have a little, she loved chocolates and she would always have a little refrigerator in her sitting room full of Godiva boxes of chocolate. And like the most amazing way she would say, take one, take two, take three. And everyone else would probably say, take one or half of one. And she always was about enjoying life. And she taught me mm -hmm. so much. And one of the most important things she did teach me is that everything can be beautiful if you take the time, which is very much what my concept of my brand is about. And also the idea of loving what you do and working hard. And she really instilled in all of her children and grandchildren the importance of hard work, passion, and dedication. And you know, I saw her go to work every single day till she was in her mid 80s. She was forever trying fragrances, getting first production of any product mm -hmm. that 
office. And even in the end, when she couldn't really go to the office as much, she would get in her car. And one thing she used to love to do is see the windows at Christmas time at the stores in New York because it would inspire her and intrigue her. And she was always thinking. And, you know, there's so many wonderful stories that I would love to discuss today with you about her creativity. She was really a pioneer. She lived the American dream. She started her brand in 1946, um, and she had this incredible vision and worked hard. And um, you know, she was the one that created Gift with Purchase, which is a brilliant concept. Everyone mm -hmm. around the world now knows what it is. And at the time, everyone thought she was crazy, but it was she was brilliant. She really did shape the beauty industry quite a bit. The gift of purchase is something that you see all the time now at beauty counters at, you know, Neiman, at Saks, and then also Sephora. It's now, you know, she really pioneered a new way of looking at beauty. Uh, do you have- and, you know, was, not, not to interrupt you, but there was a great story when we launched um, the brand in the 60s in the UK. And Esty also really felt it was important to be international. She was one of the first American beauty brands to go international into international markets. And there's a very famous story. We launched Esty Lauder at Harrods in the 60s. And I guess this Bentley drive, drives up and it was the lady in waiting for the queen who came in to get the gift with purchase. And it showed you that she really understood her customer. She always used to say a woman knows what a woman wants. And so mm -hmm. true. Even the queen wants it. Even the queen. <laughs> Even the queen wants it. So, you know, kind of going back to that idea of SJ as the American dream, um, she created the brand in the 40s when most women weren't working, right? And her parents were also immigrants from Hungary. So I would love to hear more about, you know, how you think that affected your ethos, the company's ethos today, um, and, you know, how she built the resilience to kind of work in this environment that wasn't necessarily always the friendliest to her. Well, you know, it's interesting today when business is different and it's more challenging than ever. When Estee started, you know, as you said, most women were not working. She had this mm -hmm. vision. She was incredibly passionate and dedicated. She was brilliant in the concept. She started off with three or four skincare products. And what she used to do is she would go to beauty parlors where women were trapped under the hairdryer mm -hmm. and she would try the products on them and they couldn't move. So they were trying the creams and she eventually got them to purchase the product. And it was interesting. She... Um, really was a pioneer in the sense of fragrance. We launched a fragrance called Youth Dew. I think it was 1953 and originally mm -hmm. it was a bath oil because at the time women didn't buy fragrance for themselves. They had to wait for their husband or boyfriend to give it to them. Mm -hmm. That's ridiculous. I want to think outside the box. And so she launched Youth Do in a very, very central ad, a nude photograph of a woman, which at the time was so unusual. And it was very funny, Saks Fifth Avenue, she went to Saks and spilled it all over the floor because she wanted people, that was her way of sampling, like she couldn't afford samples. So everyone was like, what is that smell? What is that smell? And then they ended up having to buy Youth Do because everyone was obsessed. So it just, you know, what she created and her concept of thinking outside the box and overcoming challenges. I mean, right now with department stores and our channel of distributions all changing, you know, it really forces you to think outside the box and relook at your product assortment and how you communicate to the customer. And that's, she really taught me a lot about that. And she was very inspiring as, as both a grandmother and professional businesswoman. What a phenomenal story, dropping the bottle of Youth Dew in a department store. And of course, everyone would be like, what's that marvelous smell? She definitely had a sense of sales, I think, was a lot unorthodox, but really quite worked. So I work mm -hmm. in the sales team here at Google and Estee purportedly said, you know, I have never worked a day in my life without selling. If I believe in something, I sell it and I sell it hard. Mm -hmm. uh, does this approach resonate with your experience of your grandmother and how Definitely. does it influence? Yes, that's the way she did it. <laughs> I to visits with her. And you know, the one thing I really mm -hmm. miss is that I, you know, used to experience business with her. We would talk about it at dinner. Um, she was always letting me try samples, but you know, I never really worked with her like in a meeting, watching how she conducted herself, how she created products. That's the one thing that I really, really regret because when I graduated from university, it was right when she started getting older and was really mm. working from home. But you know, she really just taught me the importance of, as you said, like just being persistent and selling, selling, selling. She would go to counters and do people's makeup at the counter. It was like, she was known for that. And that was her thing, a three minute makeover. She would do it in a, you know, she loved to touch the customer. I think it's such a marvelous thing to hear the amount of respect and, you know, overall reverence that you have for your grandmother. I love that you still have that connection to the history um, of your heritage. So that kind of leads me to the question about your own brand, Erin. Mm -hmm. right? So very similar to your grandmother, you went on, started your own business almost around the same age. I did, um, exactly. 
So I would love to hear more. You know, the business consists of a strong fragrance business, fashion, mm -hmm. beauty, home decor. Um, what's a brand's genesis story and where do you hope to take the company? Mm -hmm. Well, it's a great story because I had been at Estee Lauder for 25 years and I had held different positions in marketing, product development. In the end, I was creative director of Estee Lauder for many, many years. And I was forever being asked, what's in your makeup bag? What are the items you can't live without? And I felt that there was an opportunity in the marketplace for this concept of a beauty lifestyle brand. And our CEO, Fabrizio Freda, who's totally brilliant, loved the idea, but he said, you have to write a business plan, present it to the board and focus group it to see if it has a concept that people that resonates. And what was interesting is that people really associated me with beauty at home. Um, I always used to say, having sort of the conversation, that like beauty is very much my heritage, but I really love home and accessories. And so the concept of lifestyle I thought was really an interesting concept. And I thought there was an opportunity for that when we launched this about eight years ago. And we started off with more makeup and a little bit of skincare. And then we went into fragrance a few months later. And our fragrances have been nominally received. Um, they are about storytelling destinations. We're about to launch our 25th fragrance this fall. And um, we're in about 46 markets for beauty and about 40 for home. And what's been fascinating is watching this consumer grow and really She's embracing the brand. It's all different ages. We have people who are 100 years old and love the brand, and we have 12 year olds coming in to get lip conditioner. And so it's really, it's about, it's more about a lifestyle and a concept than a demographic. It's, you know, we really do try to have that element of surprise, pretty, approachable storytelling. Those are all key words that the brand is about. And we're continuing to evolve. And what's interesting is our website has done phenomenally well during this time because it's an escape and it's wonderful um, stories and products and experiences. And as I said, beauty and home are two categories that people are really gravitating towards. You know, Esther used to say during times of depression and war, lipstick sales go up. And when this whole pandemic started, you know, our fragrance sales went up and all over the world, people really wanted to still have their fragrance, their signature. And the same for home. People, as you said, are working from home, living at home, you know, cooking three meals a day at home. Um, you know, the, everyone's life has changed. So it's been a really exciting and challenging time. But, you know, I do think the lifestyle concept resonates and we have three stores and I hope to open up more little tiny boutiques that are these wonderful jewel boxes that are a combination of products that we make and products that we find. So it has a wonderful sense of edit. And, you know, there's nothing I love more than when I go into a store and I find people experiencing and discovering the brand. And for your fans today, where can we find those three stores? Are they currently open for some visits? They are open up? with masks, gloves. You know, it's we're selling masks and they're selling out. I mean, we can't keep them in stock. Um, we have a store in Palm Beach, which has always been a very wonderful, um, special place to me and my family. My grandmother used to go there and we now as a family go there. So we've got a beautiful little tropical inspired store in Palm Beach. And then we have our first store was ever that we ever had was in South is in Southampton. And I opened it up as a pop-up store a couple of years ago. Everyone was doing pop-up stores. And we opened it up and never closed it because it's still to be our best-selling store. And um, then we have another one in East Hampton. And we're still exploring the idea of pop-ups mm -hmm. because I do think that's a really interesting thing for the brand. We just did something in Aspen. I think we're going to do something again. We did it with a group of brands um, and at Christmas time. But I do think there's an opportunity to have these little boutiques. And I think what's going on trend-wise, people do feel safer in a smaller environment that's more controlled. Absolutely. And then you can get exposure to a lot of different types of markets, get feedback about exactly. how, what's trending here, what's trending there, might be different by coastal, so in the middle of the country. So it's very interesting. Um, I would love to know, because you're on the forefront of seeing all these consumer um, demands and tastes, right? With limited social engagements and this work from home period, have you seen a change? Um, I know you've seen an increase in demand, but anything change in terms of sustainability or certain types of products? Um, and what is your overall forecast you know, for the future of beauty and home? Well, I actually have seen a change in the sense that people really are not buying fashion and accessories. Mm -hmm. They're really constantly buying things for their home. It's for the family. You can all enjoy it. Um, a more casual home. Um, mm -hmm. I cannot tell a lie. I really could not before this pandemic. And now I can make the best roasted chicken. And I reached out to Anna Garden on Instagram and now we've become friends. And, um, you know, I think that our product assortment is changing. You know, as soon as this happened, we switched gears and are making, you know, our next collection 
all kitchen inspired, um, really easy, casual, but still, you know, special. Um, and I think that people are still looking for things to make them feel good, but in a different way. And I do think that's where beauty and home are so fascinating right now, because it is really, fragrance has always been like a mood change, um, mood changer, like it makes you feel good, you immediately feel as if you're far away. And one of our most successful fragrances is called Mediterranean Honeysuckle. And it's inspired by the Mediterranean. The package looks like a beautiful floor and cap rate. And it continues to be our best selling fragrance around the world from Shanghai to New York to London, Paris. It's people love it. And it's about discovery, surprise. It's a, it's a dream. It's really like summer in a bottle. That's perfect. That's what I think a lot of us are desiring to you know, be in at this moment. You mentioned like easy, casual, special kind of being the mode that a lot of you know American families and beyond are kind of gravitating towards right now. You know, I'd also love to know what are your favorite must try Erin products? Well, I have to say the first product we created and it still continues to be our best seller is a rose lip conditioner. And it's a beautiful hydrating lip conditioner in a pale pink tube. Um, and, you know, it was like it was when I first talked about the products I couldn't live without, it was a lip conditioner, it was a body cream, it was fragrance, it was a bronzer. So those were originally in the first collection that we launched. And this rose lip conditioner continues to be a bestseller. We've done it in tinted versions and we've done it. Um, we're going to come out with a new form of it in the fall. Um, and it still is very, very successful. That's amazing. And so you at your stores sell mm -hmm. your own brand, Erin, but also curate a selection of other, you know, bespoke, unique items that you sell as well. Long before, uh, long before the term influencer was coined, uh, you were considered a tastemaker and curator of beauty. What does that mean to you? And how do you find new and novel things to share with the world? Well, I'm always inspired by, um, you know, my friends, film, art, Instagram. And I think that that really does kind of help me create the collections and the products that you see. And I take it as a huge compliment that I'm an influencer and tastemaker. And I, I, I you know, really appreciate that. And it's a wonderful, wonderful compliment. But I do think it's because I've really been surrounded by beauty and fashion for so many years. I mean, when I used to go with SD to Europe, we would go to the fashion shows and I was in the beauty industry for 25 years before I started my own brand. So I've really had the experience of learning and being inspired by the best of the best. You know, my uncle has this wonderful, um, quote, you're only as good as the people around you and I'm surrounded by the best. And it's true. I've been exposed to wonderful, wonderful talent and they're all inspiring in different ways. It's amazing. So I know a lot of people are here today with us to hear about home and designing in the home. So many people on this line are working from home for the foreseeable future. I'm in New York and New York apartments aren't necessarily known for their sprawling grounds and open mm -hmm. space. You know, bedrooms have been converted into makeshift offices, a dining table in a studio, maybe transformed into a couple's workspace. You know, where does one start when thinking about how to design a room beautifully, but also functionally during this time? Well, I think, you know, as you said, like everyone's changing their workspace and not everyone has an office or a desk. So I think you can make any space a workspace. When the beginning, I started sitting on a table and I just put it, filled, you know, covered it with like special things, photographs, objects, flowers. So it immediately became my desk and my environment. And I do think that home is really important right now. And I think that lighting and memories, like I love pictures and picture frames, you know, frames continue to be one of our best selling products right now. Mm -hmm. And um, I think certain elements that make a home a home, you know, SD was the one that really taught me that the importance, like see there's a plant behind you, like, you know, <laughs> plants, flowers, photographs of family, um, candles are really inviting. We have a wonderful lighting business. And um, I think lighting immediately creates a mood in a room, whether it's a pretty lamp on your desk or um, a ceiling fixture. So I really do think that home is important. And I think it's all about feeling comfortable and embracing it. And, you know, I think if you have children or animals, everyone should be allowed everywhere. And for those who have left their homes for different cities or more space, do you have any tips on how to make a new place feel like home? And, you know, how do we think about the concept of home more fluidly as people are moving in and out of spaces during this time? Well, I think photographs, I have to say, photographs immediately make a home feel like a home. And I think I learned to love photographs of my mom, who for every birthday, Christmas, always gives me a framed photograph from the year of memories. And I think that immediately that can transform any space to feel special because it's just, I think there's nothing more important than memories. And I also think I have to say things that make a home feel cozy is a candle. A scented candle really can allow you to escape and it can completely can change your mood since it's, you know, scented.
Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It takes you to, it's a sensory kind of simulation of some exactly. sense, taking you to a memory, nostalgia, places you've been, places you aspire to go. Yeah. Um, kind of on that note, aesthetics have been said to positively affect our moods, right? Has your team done any research or work around this? Um, and have you seen any recommendations for items or layouts that promote relaxation and ease? Well, actually, it's funny that you say that, you know, blue is a color that everyone loves. People find blue very calming. It's the color of the sea and the sky. And so we do, you know, when we go back and forth with products, whether it's accessories, beauty or home, we always try to incorporate blue into it. So we do feel that's a very calming color, like red and orange are not, not as calming. So we do take into account, you know, and obviously with fragrance, you know, we have, as I said, 25 fragrances and they're all different um, overall moods and feelings, but generally they're very floral because the brand is very much about pretty and flowers and inspired by nature. Um, so they that does lift your mood. And I think that scent, as I said before, can really, you know, we always have um, a combination of like these wonderful mixes of ingredients that are elements of surprise mm -hmm. coming out with one in the fall. That's an amber and it has like a wonderful spicy note with a little bit of like an amaretta. Like it has a really kind of delicious, pretty luxurious, sent to it, which will allow people to kind of create a good mood. And you, like a lot of um, Americans today, are browsing Instagram late at night. I think a lot of folks would love to hear about, you know, any favorite blogs, books, or people you enjoy following who talk about home design as well. Well, I love um, Architectural Digest. I think Amy's done a great job with that. I love El Decor. I love follow. I love following on her garden. That's how I learned to make my roast <laughs> thin. I think, and I think the way she shows food and makes it look easy, but still beautiful. Um, and I also love following different personalities. Cabana Magazine was started by a friend of mine, Martina, and I think her view on home and textiles is so inspiring. And, you know, I have to say a lot of different designers, Wes Gordon, um, who's the designer for Carolina Herrera is great to follow because you see a combination. He does love home and he's bringing home into Carolina, the brand, and you see his love of flowers and tabletops. So those are the ones that I always kind of gravitate towards at two in the morning. These are great tips. I think a lot of folks are going to look at, up these names afterwards. I would also love to know, when you think about designing your own spaces, Erin, you know, when you take a step back, what are some questions you need to ask yourself before designing a space, right? So the desk is one thing, but what are some essential questions that any person trying to take on interior design project should be thinking about? Well, I think you should gravitate towards what you respond to. And I think lighting, as I said, is a really key part of any room, whether it's you know, it's the ceiling fixture, floor, mm -hmm. floor light. I think it can completely transform a space. And I also think color can, like the wall color. I think, you know, if you want neutrals, if you want something more vibrant, I think there's something very important. Once you get those elements down, then you can keep adding to it. And I do feel that with designing a room, you should do it gradually. I think there's nothing more fun than discovery and finding something that special that you, you enjoy and you respond to, because I think it's all personal. This is where you're gonna live. This is where you're gonna sleep. So therefore, you should really love all the different pieces. And I think there's something really nice about adding to a room. I'm forever adding to a space. Right now I'm actually sitting um, in our home in Long Island and I saw one of the questions is like, explain the blue and white china behind you. This is my grandmother's home and she bought it in the seventies and it was done by an American designer named Mark Hampton and the whole house was blue and white because SD loved blue and white and that was the color for her brand when she first started. Um, and so the, behind me are the, her pieces from her, um, ceramic collection of Chinese ceramics. And um, I kept it as is, and I've changed, made some modifications, but the house is generally very blue and white. So, you know, I've loved adding to her collection. There's nothing I love more than setting the table with new items from my Aaron line mixed with special ones that used to belong to her. Thank you for sharing that story. Um, I'm thinking about your mention of Ina Garden. I actually had the chance to see her at the New Yorker Festival last year before COVID kind of hit. And, you know, one of our beloved perks is our delicious cafes at Google, right? Um, now that a lot of us are at home, we're all having to cook our meals now. I, like you, did not really cook before COVID happened. I actually didn't even own a lot of proper dinnerware or proper <laughs> pots or pans. I, you know, was in my 20s at Google. I've been there since graduating. So I actually bought some of your Aaron plates from a collaboration with William Sonoma. Thank and you. that's when I was like, oh, this is really lovely. I, I have to discover more about how I can bring these small spots of joy into my life during this time. You know, do you have any favorite recipes to share? Um, for a lot of our employees who haven't cooked a lot previously, what type of essential dinnerware, you know, or 
or cookware would you recommend? What are the staples? Well, I have to say Williams Sonoma has been an amazing partner. It's a collaboration um, that we've just re-signed with them and they've been a fantastic, fantastic partner. I think all their tabletop is easy. You put it in the dishwasher, the glasses, the plates. Um, and, you know, I have to say I've learned to cook a few dishes and Ina Garden really has been my go-to and you can go onto her, you know, Instagram, you can Google her recipes and they're really easy. So I've been learning how to make chicken. I've learned how to make fish. I, um, you know, I think the, the basics like, you know, mm -hmm. hamburgers and hot dogs. And I have to say like, there's something really nice and really kind of fulfilling to sit down as a family for meals. And that was something that I think our lives before were all so busy and everyone was mm -hmm. traveling too much, working so much all over the place. And there's something very special about coming together at the end of the day. Absolutely. I think without the cafes, everyone's, mm -hmm. but I think everyone's, you know, kind of, you, you realize that everyone can kind of change their life and work. Of course. I like that. It's such a beautiful message. Um, kind of reminds you that you have a new book coming out, Entertaining Beautifully. Um, it will focus, I believe, on bringing beauty, style, and joy into milestone events, holidays, and of course, everyday moments and meals. I would love to learn more about it. Tell me more about the, the story of how it all began. Well, the book is called Entertaining Beautifully. We're launching it in the fall. And it's really this concept that Esty used to say, everything can be beautiful if you take the time. And I'm very excited that the book is actually more about entertaining for yourself. So it feels mm -hmm. good timing right now. It's not about a big party. It's not about a big event. It's really about you know not saving your special teacup mm -hmm. for a special dinner, but using it at your desk every day. And it's really about you know, entertaining in the kitchen, entertaining as a family, um, wonderful little tidbits, stories. You know, Esty was the ultimate entertainer. She used to do these wonderful, glamorous dinner dances. And just the idea that she would have a little fragrance at everyone's seat um, as a special little gift is something like certain traditions, which are fun, we've incorporated into the book. And I do that sometimes when I do an event or a birthday um, dinner for someone, I'll do a little kind of gift and Erin Beauty product for everyone. But the book is really kind of a wonderful read and it's really, it's broken up by season. Um, so you kind of go from the fall all the way through and it's just a Halloween party, a kitchen dinner, um, you know, tea for two friends. So it really has a wonderful story and concept behind it. And it's really about that idea that taking time for yourself. And it's available for pre-order right now? It's available for pre-order yes. and mm -hmm. we're launching it, I think in October. Okay, perfect. It's great to know. Yeah, it was actually the cover of the book was shot in this room on this sofa. My dog is sitting next to me. My through this whole thing, my dogs have not left my side. They're going to be very sad when I go back to work. Like they're the ones having the best time. But um, literally, I was sitting in this exact same sofa um, in Esther's living room. Very much her DNA. So the cover of the book, when folks get it, they'll know exactly where it is. Exactly. Oh, I did notice it's your dog. Long dress at a different time. <laughs> now in jeans. <laughs> Uh, I love your dogs, by the way. I think I saw one on the left side of you for some time. Yeah, I know. That's Great like, moral that's support. Yeah, I love animals. I have to say that's another thing with my family. Mm -hmm. We love animals. And so therefore, when you're doing a room, everything should be, you know, accessible to children, animals. I think there's something about living in a room and enjoying it. And that's, I feel very, very important. Yes. I think that philosophy is very important, being able to live in a space that, mm -hmm. you know, you can actually fully live in without fear of like breaking something, you know, altering something. It's just, you can move freely. Exactly. Um, so back to your book, right? Few of us are able to have dinner parties or celebrate graduations, birthdays, milestones in the same way that we were able to before. Mm -hmm. You know, what are some alternatives or adjustments that you found to be very helpful in this time of distance? Well, you can still celebrate, but in a different way and almost in a more meaningful way. I turned 50 mm -hmm. in April. And originally I had this Happy whole birthday. Thank you very much. I was going to go to Miami with a group of girlfriends and I was all excited and I was like planning this fabulous trip and obviously plans change. And I celebrated it with my husband and my children and my parents. And it made me realize that's really in the end who I really wanted to be with. And I think that, you know, during a time when you can entertain, you still can celebrate, you get a delicious cake, celebrate, you know, have a glass of champagne decorate the table. In our family, we always do birthday breakfast. It's a tradition, a lot of family tradition. I've continued mm -hmm. that. And I always, my son just turned 21 and I did, you know, the cake for breakfast yes. and beautiful things on the table, which I'm sure you can see on my Instagram. But I do think it's about, you know, even though life has changed, celebrations are still really important, whether you get married in a different way or, you know, there's been some wonderful marriages that have happened in a very private, small way. And I think sometimes things like that even end up being more special. So my 50th birthday ended up being perfect, almost. 
Well, happy birthday to you. Have been there, but yeah. it's not that. My two, my two closest friends. But that's beautiful. I'm glad to hear that, you know, you are finding these small moments for joy and also adapting, uh, which I think most of the world is having to do right now, um, now that life has changed for the temporary foreseeable future. And before we transition into a Q&A, you know, to close off, do you have any parting thoughts about, you know, how New York, America, and the world at large can continue seeking inspiration for beauty and a feeling of home for the rest of the year? Well, I think beauty and home are very important for the world right now. I think it really is something it, you can embrace it because beauty, as I said, allows you to escape and feel good. And, you know, Advanced Not Your Pair, I was thinking like that's the other product I cannot live without. And we just relaunched it with Estee Lauder and this beautiful new glass bottle. And I think that those are two categories that are really important right now because they make you feel good and everyone can enjoy it. Like the home mm -hmm. and obviously fragrance and beauty is important for you personally. But I do think it's... You know, I think everyone just needs to take one day at a time and think about what's important and spend time with people that you really care about. Thank you so much, Erin. And now we'll be opening up to Q&A. So I think um, Myred O'Leary, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, but when putting together a look or a collection, how do you decide what to exclude and to keep for another time? That is a great question because we're forever adding and taking away from certain collections. And we work on things about a year and a half in advance. So we have just finished um, next spring and we're starting to work about fall 21 and start. What we do is we start with a concept. We think of a, a city, a place, a, you know, an idea for this fall. It's all about tapestries and we're about to update our site in the next month. And you really start to see the different products that you need to add to it. So we always do beauty, home, and accessories. And we want it to all be one concept. So when you are inspired by tapestries for home, you also see that inspiration in beauty and accessories, and therefore it becomes a lifestyle brand. So I always say when you go to the Mediterranean for the spring inspiration, you also are seeing those colors in the vases and in the you know, sandals and bags. So it is really about picking and choosing the right products and having the right balance between all, not having too much home, not enough beauty. So it's all balance because we really want to make sure that this woman experiences the brand in a complete lifestyle way. Uh, thank you so much, Erin. And the next question we have is from Pilot Village. Do you have any tips for creating an interior style that combines a modern look without compromising original features of a period property? That's a good question. Um, you know, I think living in this house that was done in the 70s with a lot of traditional elements, I have added modern touches. And I think that there's something really nice about having a modern interior with touches of things that are old or vice versa. So I think it's all about mixing periods as long as it looks good together. So I do think that that's an important element to do. And, you know, you can have a very modern kitchen with vintage ceramics and it looks great. So I think it is about mixing, mixing and matching. That's true. Mix and match, you get a little bit of everything. Um, with Akshay Kumar, we have a question. How did you decide whether to launch your brand within Este or independently? That's a great question. Um, well, I, it's actually a licensing partner with Estee Lauder because I'm still very involved with Estee Lauder. And I always joke that I've been with the brand for 50 years. Uh, it's so who I am and it's my family. And, you know, I, as I said, I'm involved with Estee Lauder and um, created my own brand and they work very synergistically together. My brand sits on the Estee Lauder counter where Renutra is sold, which is our luxury skincare category. Um, sorry, luxury skincare collection. And basically Erin Beauty Fragrance is a perfect complement to Renutra. So they are very close and very together, which is really nice. And that's what I wanted it to be. It's very much um, mm -hmm. like the next generation of Estee Lauder. And from Paulina Gallagher, um, living in New York City in a tiny apartment and on a budget makes it hard to give my space the work from home makeover it deserves. Do you have any simple tips to refresh a small space? Well, I actually think, as I said, a candle and like a little thing of flowers or a little mini plant can immediately transform any space. And I think that that's you'll see the difference or, you know, in my book, when I talk about the importance of like, you know, using a pretty glass or a coffee cup, mm -hmm. like a few little elements, home elements will immediately transform that space, big or small. Thank you. And from Barb Gills, um, what is your favorite room in your home and what makes it so special to you? Well, I have to say the room I'm sitting in right now is my favorite room in this house. It is really, it's all about Estee. It's 
you know, as I said, blue and white, it's a great story. When she first started the brand, she would go into people's powder rooms because she wanted to see what color most of her friend's powder rooms were. And she was torn between blue and green for her products. And she realized that most rooms were, most powder rooms were blue and white. So therefore she created a whole brand around blue and white. And what I'm sitting right now is all of her wonderful old memories and, you know, beautiful collection of ceramics. And behind me, there are photographs of her with Princess Grace, the Aga Khan, wonderful storytelling. And I've mixed it with like pictures of my family and my children. So I have to say this room is full of incredible mem memories and things that I've added. You know, I always have um, vases from our collection in here full of flowers. And the picture behind me right now was the last picture that was taken of my grandparents before my grandfather passed away. And so the room is really full of a lot of special memories. I think it's so beautiful that you keep the memory alive. I, I find that to be a very touching thing. I think a lot of our viewers today will feel that way too. Um, and we have our next question from Andrea. Um, what were the main tools or skills you transferred from Estee to your own business? That's a great question too. I was saying that I had been in the company for 25 years and I had learned a lot of different things, very important things, and really understanding your customer and you know, acting global, but thinking local and really kind of connecting with them. And I always go through our website sales to better understand what people are gravitating towards because just because you like something doesn't mean that everyone else is gonna to wanna to purchase it. So it's really listening to your customer. And I think that's the most important thing that I've learned and um, understanding who she is, what she likes, and also kind of steering them a little bit. And I think that's what's fun with fragrance because you can create something that people might not even know they want an amber fragrance mixed with you know wonderful edible notes. And to have the response and the excitement around something um, is a wonderful way to kind of educate the consumer as well. So I do think it's really important. You know, Esty, that quote, woman knows what a woman wants. I think it's really important just to really answer their needs. And some questions also, I'm going to combine two that seem very similar. Um, one from Daniel Oyolu and the other one from Sissimo. Um, are there any changes in the world brought along by COVID that you hope continue post-COVID? And do you see any um, predictions for the way people will sell or consume online and any differences across platforms? Well, I think online has gotten stronger than ever. That's how people are shopping. And whether it's for food, fragrance, beauty home, and I think after COVID, I mean, I think people will realize how important family is. You know, when I first, when everyone first started living this new normal, you know, the first thing I was thinking about were my parents. I was so scared for them. I wanted to see them. I was scared if I was going to be exposed. And I think this has really taught me the importance of who's important to you. And I, you know, read something or heard something once that, you know, prior to this, everyone was exercising too much, traveling too much, partying too much working like everyone i mean i was you know in the beginning my phone was beeping up calendar i was supposed to be in texas i was supposed to be in china like you realize your life was so hectic in good and bad and i think it's taught everyone just to stop and stay home make a roasted chicken be with your loved ones and i think that that's something that people are going to miss when things change and i have a feeling people will still kind of want that family time and time together with people that are special. And I think there's something really nice about seeing people in small groups. I think that's gonna really continue because there's something really special about that. Yeah, it's intimate in a way that is hard to sometimes replicate when the world is so busy. Um, exactly. Yeah, so I, I do think that is a very interesting trend we've observed as well. Um, from Jasia Ma, we also have another question about trends. Um, are there any current trends in interior design that you think will outlive the moment? You know, it's funny. I think interiors are always changing and I don't know if anything necessarily will outlive the moment, but one trend that I think is interesting right now is that really boho, um, eclectic, global fine trend. And I think people, since they aren't able to travel, are really gravitating towards that, like these wonderful finds from far off places. I think there's something very special, very novel. Artisanal is a trend I think that I think will continue um, having something made by an artist that's like a wonderful ceram piece of ceramic. Um, we worked with someone named Frances Palmer out of Connecticut, who's this beautiful um, ceramic artist. And she does these incredible one-off vases, all handmade, and you really see how special they are. So I do think that that's, those two trends will, are, are, you're seeing a lot of them right now. And I think they will continue because I think there is something feels special and not mass produced. 
And our next question, also kind of on that note, you introduced me to this brand called Tamaris Paris. Tom oh, yes, I know. Yes, also one of those artisanal, unique brands, you know, small. I was sitting here and I was like, I would love to be in Paris one day. So I mm -hmm. started looking at their plates and their flowers. So yeah, I totally I mean, that's understand. person I follow on Instagram and I Instagram like message him at like two in the morning. Yeah, but he's got a wonderful eye. Mm -hmm. um, beautiful home store in Paris, full of like all these magical things. And um, yeah, no, I think home is interesting. You know, I used to always say my dollhouse was my favorite toy. If I could still play with mm -hmm. one, I would. And, um, you know, I think there's something really interesting about home, especially now, because everyone is home. You're working from home, you're eating at home and trying to make it as comfortable and special as possible is really, I think, important. And it's also a fun time to kind of change things up and eat in different rooms and, mm -hmm. you know, make the most out of your home. Of course, um, make the most of time at home. Title sure. of this talk today. Yeah. <laughs> well, also the next question we have uh, from Prince Jewels, New York City. What are you reading and are watching right now? Oh, that's a good question. Reading, you know, to tell you the truth, one book that I'm rereading now is my grandmother's autobiography that she wrote many, many years ago because I love all her quotes and I, you know, haven't read it in obviously years. And I think it's, there's something about understanding business and business during difficult times that she was so genius at. And so I've kind of rereading that to kind of update myself and learn more about her amazing vision and watching. I mean, I have to say I've watched everything. I mean, I've like, you know, I actually love watching old movies. I've been going back towards a lot of the old movies like Gigi and, um, Philadelphia story. I'm always inspired by film. And I think there's something really beautiful with that kind of old school um, fashion and beauty and home. You know, there's something really amazing about how they would set the table and the glasses and the candlesticks. So I'm watching a lot of old movies for inspiration. I saw Gone with the Wind was one of your favorites before in another interview. So I know. I, just, yeah. I like period mm -hmm. movies. Mm -hmm. Of course, well, I've watched all the junk that everyone has watched that you don't want to talk about. <laughs> but I like that. I do find the old ones very inspiring. So you're rereading your grandmother's uh, autobiography right now. I actually had a friend ask um, me to ask you this question, which is, if you were to write your own autobiography, what would it be titled? Not to put you on the spot. <laughs> oh, God, that's hard. I don't know. I mean... You know, the brand has been so interesting for me because it's been such an incredible learning experience and I've grown mm -hmm. up so much and I've been challenged and, you know, good and bad. And it's taught, mm -hmm. taught me how to really think outside the box because if you notice the brand, we don't advertise at all. It's all mm -hmm. organic, all the press and the buzz. But I don't know what my title would be. That's a really good question. I mean, probably just my first name. I don't know. I just mm -hmm. think it's funny. My, the story behind that was we focus grouped SD, Aaron Lauder and Aaron. And my name, my just single name, um, tested better than all of the three. And I was named after my grandfather. My mother's father was named Aaron. And he passed away when she was really young. So she wanted to keep that name. And she made up this crazy spelling. And I was little, I hated it. I was so jealous of my sister's name, which is Jane. I was like, I want just a classic, pretty easy name. No one could ever spell my first name. So I think my name is really, there's something very special about it. It is. I think I've never really seen the spelling anywhere else. It's very unique. It's your namesake. No, it. At the time, I hated it. I just wanted it to be Jane or something easy. Yeah. And from your grandma's um, you know, autobiography, any quotes that stand out to you that you remember right now that you want to share? Well, she had this wonderful quote, telegraph, telephone, tell a woman. And I have to say, if she was alive today, she would be on Instagram. She never slept. And that was another reason why I used to always crawl under her bed when I would spend the night, because she'd be up all night, too. And she really talked about the importance of communication, touch, and understanding the customer and the power of women. And you do see that today. You see, as you said, the influencers and the power they have to sell a product, to create buzz around something. And um, I think that... Quote, I keep seeing that and I keep it really resonates now more than ever. And I know we're kind of wrapping up relatively close to time. I have a couple more questions that I can take. Um, one from Emma Chaves. Um, what's been the most challenging aspect of transitioning your company during COVID? Probably working, you know, just through Zoom. I mean, I have to say, you know, a lot, certain parts of the, uh, the company are running perfectly and, you know, almost better than before because everyone's happy if they're with their children or with their family. I mean, it's not ideal, but everyone's in their home. 
and safe and happy. And I think the hardest thing is the product development. You know, one of the things we're doing is we're finding, you know, we get samples in from wherever and we used to mm -hmm. sit down at the table and hold the samples up and look at them. And now that's the challenge. So, because it is, mm -hmm. it has to be perfect. You know, Esty had this quote, it's her name on the package. It has to be the best it can possibly be. And I feel the same way about everything that we launch from the Aaron brand. So. I find myself forever getting the samples, sending them out here, looking at them, sending them back. So the process has just gotten a little bit longer for product development, but all the other areas have been quite seamless and everyone's um, working together very well, but it's the product development, but we just have to work harder at it. We do a lot of Zoom. We do a lot of conference calls. We have these ongoing documents of um, just the different products we're working on and it's just teaching us to work in a different way. But I do miss sitting around a table with my incredibly talented <laughs> team holding up these incredible products and making, you know, having a discussion about them. That's the one thing I really miss. I think a lot of us share the same sentiments as you too at Google. Yeah. Um, and with Heather Clark, um, she has a question about jewelry, which we haven't talked too much about today. Um, I saw that you had been in a, I can't remember if it was Sotheby's or Christie's a jewelry campaign at some point, but she would love to know, um, what's your philosophy around jewelry? And by the way, love Erin and Estee okay. Lauder Company. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, I love jewelry. Um, you know, the funny thing about jewelry, I actually learned so much from my grandmother about home, beauty, mothering, business. And I also learned a lot with her about jewelry. She used to always say, like, we're one great piece. And she really was not into, like, tons and tons of jewelry. And I think that's something that I've learned. Like, today, and we're just one pretty band. Um, and it's really the idea of just wearing something special, but not a lot. And I think that's something very important. And I think it always looks elegant and timeless. And she used to always leave her jewelry on her dresser and the night from the night before and I would come in with like diapers on there's all these great <laughs> pictures of me literally wearing diaper and putting on like her long gloves and gold shoes and her cocktail ring from the night before so it was meant to be lady it's of glamour be. I know <laughs> um Tina Gogna would also like to know <laughs> we love to build things for the future at Google where do you see the home beauty industry in the next 10 years what are the key transformation and trends Okay, that's a great question too. I think home and beauty will continue to grow. And I think a lot of fragrance for the home, new ways of fragranting a home, I think is really interesting. And I think more effortless, easy living at home, um, more casual, kitchen entertaining. Um, I think that's really where the trend is going to be. And I think, um, you know, the idea of home fragrances, you know, Joe Malone is a brand of Estee Lauder that is doing mm -hmm. phenomenally well right now because it's all about, you know, the sensory experience. And I think that that's something that's very important and it's going to continue to grow bigger and bigger. And the next question I have is from Rina Sedino. How do you cope with high pressure and stress of managing business? So you've got a toe in Aaron, a toe in Estee Lauder. How do you do it all? It's really hard. I mean, I have to say, thank goodness my children are not like six and seven doing Zoom <laughs> because I couldn't have done the school thing. I mean, I, that was something that I just couldn't have done it. I would have been so stressed. But I think that you really have to take some time out for your day, during your day, to do something for yourself, whether it's call a friend. Um, in the beginning of this pandemic, I did an interview for Bergdorf Goodman, and I talked about, you know, every day do something for yourself that makes you feel good, whether it's a walk, call a good girlfriend, you know, watch something on television that relaxes you, read a good book. And I really believe in that. And I think that that's something that you really have to do because the day can get, you know, you the day can go by, you haven't done anything that makes you necessarily, if you're working, if you're cooking, if you're cleaning, you're doing everything, you need a little time for yourself. And that's one of the reasons why I think beauty is such a wonderful escape to take a bath, to put mm -hmm. fragrance on can transform your mood. So. I do think it's important to take time for yourself. This is a very important reminder, especially since a lot of us don't have division between work and personal life today. So it's good to remind everyone to take a moment out yeah. of their day for themselves. Yeah. Um, and Liu Lu has a question. Um, what do you think of the flow of a space? How do you visualize a flow of use so that the design is both pretty and functional? Well, I think the most important thing is something should be functional. I think like empty space or dead space is not a good thing. And I also think it's really important to rearrange your living room or your you know, room sometimes. It's fun to move furniture around. And I think it's all about making sure the room can function, is comfortable, is inviting. And there's nothing wrong with changing things around a little bit, especially now when everyone's at home so much. Go into your living room, move a chair around, kind of mix things up a little bit because it will completely transform the space and feel different. Thank you. Um, 
Last question I have for today before we wrap things up. I think we had a lot of requests to see your dog. If oh. you're too so with you. <laughs> Let me we got, I think, uh, Let yes, me. I think, uh, <laughs> please give us an introduction. <laughs> see, she's like forever. Try me, maybe move the camera. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh she's been a big fan throughout we this whole time. We have three dogs. It's a little bit crazy. Do? Yeah. She's on Meta Porte video. She's on the cover of my book. She's been in every single shoot. She's adorable. She was the runt of the litter, and I recommend anyone getting a runt because they're the most special. She does not leave my side, which is good and bad. It's like one more thing. On my oh, it's great during this time. It's great to have a you know. Just come back to the office if we ever go back to the office. <laughs> she looks very happy right now. Actually, we just had oh, people said yay. Thank you for having the dog and scream. We actually just had one last question to close us off for today. Um, do you think that bringing nature into the home, such as natural materials, plants, nature designs, will remain a trend in the coming year? I definitely think so. And that's a huge part of who we are as a brand. We're inspired by shells, um, mm -hmm. flowers, um, like tons of nature elements. If you look at our brand, there's a lot of like elements from the sea. So I do think that's a trend that's gonna continue. As I said, the artisanal concept I think will last. I think this idea of inspiring from nature, I think is really important. Like floral fabrics generally do really well. I think people love flowers, birds, nature, it definitely puts a smile on your face. So I definitely think that's gonna continue. Well, thank you so much, Erin, for thank sharing you. all your thoughts today um, with us at Google. Um, with that, it's a wrap. Um, check out Erin's new book, Entertaining Beautifully, coming out this October. Who knows? Maybe there'll be a book tour. I think there was some interest in it from the Google side. Um, and have a wonderful upcoming weekend. Thanks, all. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Erin.